The faith in Jesus Christ, which guided John Wesley in founding Methodism in 1738, came to the Philippines in 1898. In the beginning, there was resistance to its coming, but the fervent desire to bring the Word of God closer to the Filipino people prompted the start of Methodism in the islands. On August 28, 1898, George Stull of the First Montana Volunteers, a Methodist minister who, as chaplain, held the first Protestant service in the Philippines. What a wonderful day this has been. How we sang, how the place was transformed, how the people wondered at our service. My text was the power of God, how God showed himself to us. Eight responded to the invitation at the close of the service to identify themselves with God's people. Not to start a Methodist church, but to bond together to honor God. Until then, to hold any but the Catholic Mass meant death. And even several years after that, there were many disruptions whenever the Word of God would be freely spoken. Until then, the reading of the Bible was prohibited. At the end of the first decade, the Word of God was translated into several of the vernacular languages. On March 5, 1899, Bishop James M. Thoburn, in an official visit on behalf of the Methodist Church, delivered the first sermon of a Methodist on the stage of the Teatro Filipino. He organized the congregation into a local charge. Bishop Thoburn arranged for the coming of missionaries and laid the groundwork for the establishment of the Methodist Church. On February 1900, the Women's Foreign Missionary Society sent the first missionaries with the arrival in the islands of Dr. Annie Norton, Miss Mary Cody, Miss Cornelia Moots, and Miss Julia Wisner. In the same year, the Philippines was made a district of the Malaysia Conference, a part of the Conference of India and Malaysia. Its first presiding elders were Reverend Jess McLaughlin and Dr. Homer Stunts. In 1901, the Evangelical Union and Organization of Protestant Missions in the Philippines was formed to ensure the efficient and cordial coordination among Protestant groups. The Methodist mission was given jurisdiction over the provinces north of Manila, namely Bulacan, Pampanga, Tarlac, Nueva Ecija, Pangasinan, Zambales, Isabela, Nueva Vizcaya, Abra, Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, Benguet, and Cagayan. Also, in 1901, municipal cemeteries were established because of stiff opposition to Protestant burials in local burial grounds. By 1902, the evangelization was started to be assumed by the growing number of Filipino Methodists. Earlier, on March 10, 1900, Nicolás Zamora was ordained the first Filipino deacon by Bishop Thoburn and later, in 1903, the first Filipino elder. Another Filipino, Pastor Felipe Marquez, was named a deacon. Also, in 1903, the Harris Memorial Training School was established to prepare Filipino women for the vocation of deaconess. In the same year, the first annual National Bible Institute was held with representatives from every province within Methodist territory. With the growth of Methodism in the country, the Philippines ceased to be under the Malaysia Conference. It was accorded the status of a mission conference in 1904. In 1909, the mission conference became the Philippine Islands Annual Conference. 
In 1906, the Dispensaria Betania was established in the Harris Training Memorial School near the Knox Memorial Church in Santa Cruz. In 1908, the Mary J. Johnston Memorial Hospital opened in Tondo to help Manila's poor women and children. Other institutions were established to meet the demand for women workers. The Mary Brown Townsend Bible Training School in Ligayen and the Florence B. Nicholson Bible Seminary in Kalookan. By 1912, the Philippines had its own resident bishop. Dr. William Perry Eveland. Succeeding him were Bishop Charles Edward Locke, Bishop Charles Bayard Mitchell, and Dr. Edwin Ferdinand Lee. In the next 30 years, the Methodist Church would consolidate its gains, giving witness to the Word of God through acts of salvation and personal conversion. The Pacific War came to the Philippines in 1941. church workers were caught in the crossfire of battle and gave up their lives for the good of their brethren. Leona Marcelino Kaonang, a well-loved and determined deaconess of Pilar Bataan, worked among the war refugees to the detriment of her frail health. She was known as the praying woman who remained always with her God and her people even if it meant the ultimate sacrifice of her life. Many other church workers were interned in concentration camps. Some were executed for guerrilla activities. This tragic period of our history was, however, the proof of the church maturity. Methodism has come of age. With the installation of the new regime, the church had to adopt to new conditions. Upon orders of the Japanese Imperial Army, who wanted all hostile nationals removed from office, the Federation of Evangelical Churches was formed in a bid to unite all the Philippine Protestant churches under one leadership. But rather than lose its identity, the Methodist Church opted for affiliation. The acting head, the Reverend Francisco Galvez, and attorney Juan Nabong conceived the strategy of convening the 1944 Philippines Central Conference to elect a national bishop. The Reverend Dionisio Alejandro was elected the first Filipino bishop of the Methodist Church. Although under the duress of wartime occupation, the election of the first Filipino bishop was a step in the right direction. After the war, the Reverend Dionisio Alejandro was reconfirmed as bishop and officiated until 1948 when he was succeeded by Bishop José L. Valencia. The daunting task of the rehabilitation of war-torn Philippines lay ahead. A new period in the church's history began. Post-war Methodism began as a missionary drive to the south. Given the Homestead Act, many of the Methodists settled in Mindanao and had asked for Methodist services. In 1952, in order to clear the matter of national boundaries, the Central Conference with Bishop José Valencia presiding redefined the geographical boundaries as encompassing the whole of the Philippines and abrogated the Committee Agreement of 1901, which had restricted the Methodist mission to the northern regions. The peripatetic Reverend Kuran Spati Spotswood formerly assigned to Cagayan Valley, became the first Methodist missionary of Mindanao. Other provinces also were given attention, 
Mindoro, Palawan, the Bicol Peninsula, and the Visayas. Philippine Methodism reached its high tide of enthusiasm between 1955 and 1964. In 1960, in order to closely supervise the new missions, two bishops were elected. Bishop Alejandro, who took charge of the Manila area, and Bishop Valencia, who presided over the northern Philippines and Mindanao, with headquarters in Baguio City. In 1967, Bishop Valencia was succeeded by Bishop Benjamin Guansin. In 1968, Bishop Cornelio Ferrer and Bishop Paul Locke Granadosin were elected as the new heads. In 1976, Dr. Laverne Mercado became the new bishop of the church. In 1980, Dr. Emerito Nakpil started his term as Bishop of Manila, a post he holds up to the present. In 1986, Bishop Jose Gamboa Jr. was elected to the leadership of the church, followed by Bishop Daniel Arichea and Bishop Benjamin Gutierrez in 1994. Through missionary zeal and sheer determination, the Methodist Church was encompassing the whole nation and spreading the Wesleyan spirit to all Filipinos. The declaration of martial law in the 70s threw the church into the vortex of social activism. They have uh, proclaimed martial law in accordance with the powers vested in the president by the constitution of the Philippines. As witnesses to God's word, ever alert and responsive to the changing times, the church leaders exhibited the compassion and fortitude at the appropriate moment. The Methodist elders were instrumental in the creation of the National Council of Churches, which served as watchdog for human rights violations at a time of authoritarianism. A few of its members were jailed for their participation in anti-dictatorship activities. Among them, Dr. Laverne Mercado, Secretary General of the National Council of Churches and Nemesio Prudente, president of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Reverend Toribio Cahiwat, a Methodist minister, and Filomena Asuncion and Evangeline Rapanot, both deaconesses. But the lessons of this painful period were not lost on the faithful. The need to bring Christ's message to the destitute and suffering became even more urgent. By the 70s, the church expanded its coverage of social centers, mobile clinics, and student centers. These are the Edna Thomas Hall in Pampanga, the Tugigarao Student Center in Cagayan, the Lingayen Christian Center in Pangasinan, the Dudley Hall in Ilocos Sur, and the Methodist Social Center in Sampaloc, Manila, now the Kapatiran Kaunlaran Foundation. In 1946, the Philippine Wesleyan University, one of the nation's premier learning institutions, was founded in Cabanatuan City. As education was deemed an important component of evangelism, other educational institutions were also founded. The Christian College, the Aldersgate College, and the Northern Philippine Academy. In 1947, a liberal arts college with professedly Protestant ideals, the Philippine Christian Colleges, which later became the Philippine Christian University, opened in Manila in collaboration with a Presbyterian church. For the church pastor, immediate and selfless attention is the answer to many of the community's problems. The church mission, to seek and to save the lost, to disseminate the Wesleyan spirit, to spread scriptural holiness and to transform all peoples and nations through the gospel of Christ, 
becomes the telling exhortation to those who bear witness to the saving grace of Jesus Christ in this world. At the eve of the new millennium, we are challenged by global epidemics of environmental deterioration, overpopulation and drug menace, as well as national ills, of grinding poverty, growing incidents of violence and graft and corruption in the government. All these did not stop the tremendous growth of the church in membership and in its spiritual life. The United Methodist people in the Philippines have made significant strides in mission evangelism, increase in membership, opening up witness and service outreach, organizing new local churches. We have increased our membership fivefold in the last 12 years. We have organized more local churches in the last 12 years than in the first 50 years of our history. And we are still growing. The mission thrust in southern Tagalog, the Visayas and Mindanao, have been enormous during the last decade. Our people have taken the initiative in developing social impact programs, new livelihood projects and resources in agriculture, fishing, light industry, handicrafts, trade and marketing have been established. The development program, known as Consult Process, has now invaded our church communities. Well-managed cooperatives have become part of church programs, as in the case of the United Methodist Cooperative in Bulacan, which started with an initial capital of 200,000 pesos, and in five years, has a lending capacity of 18 million pesos. In education, our traditional Sunday school and kindergarten classes for our children have pioneered regular preparatory schools under the new government program. There was enormous growth in our educational institutions. Our young people and their leadership through the United Methodist Youth Fellowship or UMYF, has steadily supported the church in various programs and activities. The church, in return, has given its full support and guidance to our youth. The leadership of the laity, the men and women of the church, have been competent, faithful, effective, and wide-reaching. We have seen them involved in national programs and issues. Presently, we can be proud of people holding high positions in the government who are Methodists or have Methodist background led by President Fidel V. Ramos himself. What is the vision of the United Methodist Church as it moves into the next millennium? For me, there is only one appropriate vision for the church, and that is to be a faithful servant of Jesus Christ. What that means for the United Methodist Church includes to continue proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, especially in areas where it has not been heard, to make disciples and organize faith communities, to develop a Christian spirituality and a style of life that practices the presence of God in a modern age, to reform society so that human community may flourish in freedom, justice, prosperity, and peace. To participate in the care of nature and to protect God's creation for His glory and for the benefit of all of humankind. That is my vision for the United Methodist Church in the Philippines as it moves into the next millennium. There is still so much to achieve in the Philippines, but the conviction to aspire for Christian perfection, to live a life of personal and social moral uprightness, to become a personal witness in the saving grace of God through Jesus Christ, remains the bright hope.
for the future.